Um, in this talk, I'll be talking about virtual reality, 3D printing, and uh, the applications of that. So initially, we need to understand a little bit about what is virtual reality. It helps the surgeon plan surgery by giving a prior idea of the anatomical relations in a spatial plan. So the immersive view has a clear advantage in 3D visualization. 3D printing technology helps to create a custom implants, prosthetics, it can guide surgery, uh, it can improve position of the surgical procedures. So all these things we will be looking into it. We also will be looking into what is virtual reality, what is augmented reality, what is mixed reality, etc. So virtual reality is a computer environment with the scenes and objects that appear real, making the user feel that they are immersed in their surrounding. So virtual reality needs a VR headset. For example, we would have seen this, you know, the children going into the space, touching the planets, touching the stars. So these are all possible in virtual reality. And similarly, we go through a lot of, uh, you know, virtual reality games where we wear the headset and we feel that we are actually surfing or we are going into the space. So these are all virtual reality. Augmented reality augments your surroundings by adding digital elements to a live view, often by using a camera on a smartphone. So there is no need for a VR headset in an augmented reality. So you put it on a real uh, situation and then uh, the augmented reality helps to mark the places or you know give you um, give you various uh, you know elements adding elements like uh, for example google lens is able to see something and then it is able to tell what exactly it is based on the analysis uh, and then it can even tell you where to go where not to go what is all there so that is an augmented reality augmented reality enabled phone can bring pet animals right into your space for example this is my outpatient uh, department where i'm not allowed to bring my pet but with the help of this Google uh, augmented reality application, I could bring my pet into my room. Augmented virtuality is the reverse of it, where in a virtual environment, a real life object can be visualized. So here in augmented reality, it's the real environment where the camera is able to uh, catch this uh, virtual animal, whereas augmented virtuality is the reverse. So anything uh, uh, virtual is needing a VR headset, whereas that is the, the other way around for augmented reality. So steps of uh, virtual reality. So basically, we do the image acquisition on a CT scan or an MRI. So the basic requirement is you should have a very thin cuts, one millimeter cuts, and then based on the image segmentation. Segmentation is a process where you select the organ of interest and add different colors to it. And then with the computer modeling, you can create a different uh, superimposed arteries, veins, and the actual tissues and tumors. And then you can build it into um, an augmented reality or virtual reality experience. So this is a patient. We had a bilateral tumor in the kidneys. So both kidneys had tumor. So, and this patient had a preoperative chemotherapy. So, because tumor is on both sides, we cannot remove both kidneys. Um, so, we have to plan the surgery. So, that is the virtual reality headset. So, the tumor is now marked in green. And then we are able to uh, do the virtual surgery there, uh, cut it through and see the, the, the plates. So, this helps us a lot in planning the partial nephrectomy. So, we can actually go through the exact plates then we can only remove what is needed. So that is the uh, part of the tumor removed from the right side. The similar thing is done on the left side also. So uh, virtual reality planning actually know, helps us to know the depth of it, and what exactly we will encounter, where the vessels are, whether we'll be entering into the renal pelvic calcial system. And in this patient, we also had a 3D printing. So it actually helped to see whether the tumor which was removed was exactly the same size. So we can also do a virtual surgery. So this is a joystick with which we can actually remove the tumor and see what is left of the tumor. So this kind of playing is possible uh, with uh, virtual reality applications. 
Uh, so that is a segmented uh, tumor and kidney. So it's been applied different colors. And with the help of this joystick, we are removing parts of the tumor there. So we are also able to see the relationship of the tumor to the actual kidney. We can see the volume of the kidney and volume of the tumor. So the, um, the, the residual or renal volume can be assessed. And then that can give a lot of idea about how much kidney tissue will be left. And you can also correlate with the after the surgery. So this is another patient where who had a pelvic kidney. So this is not a normal kidney, but this is the kidney in the renal pair, in the bony pelvis of that patient. This kidney has also ruptured and has got a poor function there. So this is a volume rendering of a CT scan image. So it gives a little bit of idea, but because the kidney is poorly functioning, it doesn't give us more than what is needed. It gives a vascular anatomy. So this is the virtual reality reconstruction. So segmentation images. So you can see that kidneys, the arteries, the bladder is in a uh, light pink color. And then the uterus is in a deep pink color. And the green stuff, what they have marked is the leak, the kidney. This patient is a basketball player. So she has actually gone for, um, during play, she has ruptured her kidney, the hydronephrotic kidney. So we can plan ahead of what exactly is the vascular anatomy and then if you have to remove it then we know that you know this is a typical case if you have to reconstruct it also so you can know what exactly you have to do so this is a patient who underwent a, um, a, a rectal pull through operation but later on developed a fistula between the urinary tract and the rectum so here we have given a contrast in that uh, rectum as well as in the fistula tract so with the help of this virtual reality, we are able to plan where exactly is this fistula. And after that, we are able to plan the surgery. So during cystoscopy, we can see exactly where the fistula is. So this uh, gives us an idea about planning, how to go about in this case. So this is a patient who had um, um, a cystic swelling in the pelvis. In fact, there were two cystic swellings. So there was one side, the non-functioning kidney with an ectopic ureter, and then there was also an ovarian cyst. Um, so because two different pathologies were there, and then we wanted to see in a virtual reality environment, um, so with the help of this headset and then after segmentation, we are able to see, we can actually superimpose the MRI images, or this is an MRI segmentation. So you can get the MRI and then relationship of that bowel and then uterus and other soft tissues in relation to the segmented tissues, the colored tissues there. So that is what we are doing it here. And um, so we are able to see that with the help of that, uh, you know, we can see the, the sagittal section, coronal section, whatever section, and you can see the segmented portion in relation to the non-segmented bowel. So this kind of uh, cut section and all is possible. And it helps us in planning the surgery into exactly how we want to do. So this is again a, a different segmentation sequence. Um, so this is a patient with the duplication of that ureters. So you can see that the upper moiety ureter is, uh, you know, colored in green, is dilated and obstructed and it's ectopic. Whereas the white colored ureter is the lower moiety ureter which is inserting normally. So having a prior anatomy of this particular case, helps us to plan surgery. So this is a virtual uh, um, virtual environment where you can actually see and you can move it around. So virtual reality helps one. Um, now 3D printing, how do you do 3D printing? Basically you do a CT scan or MRI and obtain the Dicon images, import that into 3D slicer program to create 3D models, export as files recognizable by the printer, then process the file, feed them into 3D printer, and then begin the process. So how can 3D printing be used? The patient-specific models, surgical planning and simulation. So you can actually you use it for planning. Uh, you can use it for education and training. You can use it for complex congenital anomalies like what we have seen. Then customized implants and prosthetics can be used actually in treatment. Then in minimally invasive surgery, you can explain uh, the procedure better to the patient. Then it can actually reduce the operating time and an anesthesia exposure and enhanced communication with the parents, patients, and families. So, so all these things can be uh, used. So this is a, 
a Wilms tumor patient, which we saw earlier, where we have printed the uh, both tumors with the photopolymer resin. Now, this is the patient who was operated in the Institute of Child Health ECMO. So, this patient had a maxillary tumor, a cementoma. So, this has to be excised. So, after excision, they have to replace the maxilla here. So, with the 3D printing, so they have replaced the maxilla. And the tumor has been excised and the face has been restored here. So, this is a patient with a temporomandibular joint uh, uh, ankylosis. So, this patient underwent um, replacement of the temporomandibular joint and uh, this has been done by 3D printed model. So, this is a 3D printed uh, temporomandibular joint and then uh, and so that has been replaced uh, after excising the, the original joint. So, real-time applications, uh, there are multiple real-time applications. We have actually seen some of the applications in both VR and 3D printing. So, a, a laptop with a dedicated graphics card provides the endoscopic view of the video captured card. Then the instrument segmented neural network runs on the laptop and extracts the images. Patient specific 3D model is constructed preoperatively and then 3D model is manually aligned and overlaid on the endoscopic view on the laptop and the model rotation and alignment is performed. So this is a, a mixed reality basically. Mixed reality means you combine you know, a virtual reality and an augmented reality. So initially you acquire a 2D image and then convert it into 3D image. Maybe you can do a 3D printing, but a virtual reality glasses are also used along with the real patient. So for example, this is a mixed reality where the surgeon is wearing the virtual reality headset and then he is um, also able to do the surgery while he is able to see it. So this is another mixed reality, a prostatic surgery, a robotic prostatectomy is being done here. So these uh, arms and all have been placed. So they are wearing the headsets. So the headsets probably will give them a view of inside. And then the robot, uh, robotic uh, console will give them an actual set. So they can actually, after uh, they can do the planning here. So they can get the, the tumor and then the vascular anatomy, everything into the division there. And then with the help of that, they can plan. Um, the assistant is actually doing the virtual uh, augmented mixed reality there and then the surgeon is actually sitting on the console doing a 3d so they can actually direct each other and help each other like this is exactly where you have to go a little bit inside a little bit outside you know he is able to see it more clearly in a, whereas the other person is able to see it in real environment so a mixed reality and augmented reality can actually augment each other so 3d printed pros and cons so 3d printed models provide a tactile feedback it allows enhanced understanding of the 3D spatial reconstructions. And you can even print a biological material. For example, um, a matrix of the bladder or a kidney can be, uh, can be printed and then cells can be allowed to invade it there. Um, then the problem, the, the disadvantage is time and the cost. So virtual reality allows simultaneous visualization of the volume rendered data set and corresponding 3D meshes which may contribute to a more comprehensive understanding uh, but the user is completely cut off from the real environment in a virtual reality so he'll be thinking that he's facing the north but he actually would have moved to the south to another corner of the room so that is a problem when you're wearing a vr headset augmented reality permits concurrent visualization of the 3d models in the real environment making it more suitable for use in the operating room uh, however accurate the co-registration of that augmented reality content into uh, you know uh, uh, the real-time application uh, can be challenging. So technology continues to evolve and contributes to improving surgical safety by reducing the risk of complications, enhancing precision. So it is important for healthcare professionals to stay up to date with these advancements to provide the best best care possible. The surgeons are well positioned to help integrate artificial intelligence into modern practice and surgeons should partner with the data scientists to capture data across phases of care and to provide a clinical context. So artificial intelligence has the potential to revolutionize the way the surgery is taught and practiced with the promise of highest quality patient care. So thank you very much for listening to this talk.